war years. And a deadly train bombing in Pakistan. Pakistan blames India. India denies involvement. Good evening. Welcome to Worldview. A secret U.S. mission with a secret weapon and a secret target. Tonight, newsstand CNN and Time breaks the story of Operation Tailwind. Based on eight months of reporting and interviews with more than 200 people, Peter Arnett has the details of a raid into Laos. According to U.S. military officials, a combined American special operations team used nerve gas on a mission to kill American defectors. In this excerpt of Arnett's report, the exclusive photos you'll see were provided by the commandos on the raid. Something happening here What it is ain't exactly clear These are the men of Operation Tailwind Our motto in Special Forces was Kill them all and let God sort them out There's a man with a gun over there Tailwind voices the U.S. government never wanted you to hear Nerve gas. Well, the government don't want it called that, but it was nerve gas. Pictures of Tailwind, a black operation so secret, even those who carried it out did not know all the details. What was dropped from there, that was a decision way above my level. This thing's been buried so deep for so long. Buried 28 years ago, during America's secret war in Laos. Death. This was the valley of death. How many of you realize that God is a spirit? Today, Robert Van Buskirk is a born-again Christian, taking his ministry into prisons. He's going to set you free, son. You know that, don't you? Back in 1970, he was First Lieutenant Van Buskirk. 1970, President Nixon was Commander-in-Chief Henry Kissinger, National Security Advisor. A time of division and turbulence, 400,000 troops still in Vietnam. The invasion of Cambodia, protests in Washington and throughout the country, and the killing of anti-war students at Kent State University by Ohio National Guardsmen. 1970, Van Buskirk was a platoon leader on Tailwind with orders to kill everything in sight, including American defectors. It was pretty well understood that if you came across a defector and could prove it to yourself with, beyond a reasonable doubt, do it. Under any circumstance, dance, kill him. It wasn't about bringing him back. It was to kill him. And Peter Arnett joins me now here in the studio. Peter, nerve gas in Laos. President Nixon announced a policy of no first use with nerve gas. How did this happen? Well, the U.S. Air Force did have large stockpiles of nerve gas, this GBU-50, in NKP. That's a base, uh, air base in uh, Thailand. The whole point of using uh, nerve gas, of course, used in extremities, I would like to uh, point out, would be to use it secretly. Laos was the place to use it secretly, particularly this area near Shivan, where Operation Tailwind was launched, mountainous, uh, no roads there other than uh, North Vietnamese roads on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, a place no one visited then, very few visit now. Another point, uh, this was mainly a military operational area by the North Vietnamese, very few civilians. So you could use nerve gas without really deep concern of, uh, of, of killing innocent people. Peter, couldn't North Vietnam have made a lot of political capital out of this? Indeed, at that point in time, 1970, the NVA were charging that, uh, that the U.S. was uh, its defoliation efforts uh, where we're causing disease and and uh, and mel and and, uh, and brutal effects on the population, uh, it was saying that napalm was a was a cruel weapon. Uh, the point in Laos, though, these uh, where Nap where this nerve gas was used was so remote, it would be difficult for the NVA if they figured out what was happening to be able to get the evidence to get these bodies back in the Hanoi region where experts could look at them. Secondly, the U.S. SOG commandos had a policy. Uh, that when they had an operation, when there were Americans down or when they'd come in contact with the other side, they would bring in uh, B-52s, heavy bombing, to basically destroy 
the area, destroy the evidence, in effect. And North Vietnam would have had to admit it was in Laos if it made the complaint about nerve gas. Indeed, because the North Vietnamese were also illegally operating there at the time, so they didn't want to bring public attention on what they were doing. And Peter, talk about this other explosive element in your report, the issue of American defectors and U.S. military policy. Yes, that is indeed explosive. I mean, you've got to go into the psyche, the feeling of the American soldiers at that time, particularly the SUG operatives. These were special operatives. They were determined even in 1970 to try and win the war. They were convinced that American defectors were using radios uh, in Laos and in the border area to mislead American aircraft, to mislead uh, helicopter operations. American defectors, they believed, had the language, they had the lingo down. They could talk on the radio to misguide and mislead <clears throat> American operational forces. One source told us that a defector on the radio would be worth an NVA battalion. Uh, the feeling was uh, by all these SOG people that these defectors should be killed rather than rescued. And that's what they tried to do. They tried to kill them. And in this case, uh, one of the operative SOG people did tell us he killed two Americans that he was convinced would affect us. Peter, there was probably no more skilled Vietnam veteran than Peter Arnett. Were you surprised by what you learned in compiling this report? I was surprised uh, to learn it, but on the other hand, when you look at the whole SOG operation, uh, plausible deniability, secret, I knew very little, most people knew very little about it until a year or so ago and reports are coming out about it. But many will be surprised by this story. But we believe we've, uh, we've nailed down the fact that nerve gas was used and that American defectors were killed in the course of the war. Peter, thanks very much. You can see the full story of Tailwind, the largest, deepest raid into Laos by the U.S. military, in Peter's report tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern Time on newsstand, CNN, and Time. A tragedy on the rails further heightens tension between India and Pakistan. At least 23 people were killed when a bomb exploded Sunday on a train in southern Pakistan. We have a report from Nick Robertson. The overnight train en route from Karachi in the south to the northwestern frontier city of Peshawar was less than halfway into its journey when it was ripped apart by a powerful bomb. Railway officials say that carriage 13 that bore the brunt of the blast was full at the time. The explosion sparked a fire that spread to two other carriages. The injured were taken to local hospitals.